Is it the formation of it? Yeah, so the last ice age in this part of the world was about 20,000 years ago. 20,000. So these were cut, these deep grooves were cut sometime after that. And then ice was gone from here by about 14,000. So this was sitting under ice, well, maybe maybe six to 10,000 years, something like that. And um, which way was the ice going, by the way? Well, supposing you'd landed from Mars and you didn't know that Lake Erie was just down there, which, how would you tell? It's not easy. Possibly. Hmm? The scratches are like inverted drumlets. They have a pointy end and a rounded end. Yeah, they do. We can't see them here. I'll point them out down there. But um, ice was basically flowing towards the south. So it goes all the way down to um, basically Cincinnati in Ohio. I was down there on Wednesday, actually, and um, there's the same glacial landscapes all the way down to Cincinnati. So flowing basically north, out of Canada, into the States. Now this is where it's going to get really confusing. She was just trying to figure out where Cincinnati is. Oh, he was trying no, to No, no, it's okay, don't worry. But this is where things can get confusing, because we've got young striations, you know, 20,000 years old, but they cut into very old rocks. And the rocks here are about 400 million. So there's a huge time break between the rocks and this decoration on top, okay? And um, the rocks are uh, reefal rocks. So they, again, they originated in one of these broad, shallow seas that covered the shield. You remember the term cover rocks that we used in class? Well, the shield's still below us. And um, there were reefs which were like pinnacles on the seafloor, made out of the remains of fossils. And because they're in shallow water, they often get stirred up by storms and so on. Um, and then once you got off the reefs, you went down into deeper water and you get down into uh, muddier shales and so on. So these um, are quite important, these reefs, for oil and gas. Remember, what we see here, exposed at surface, is gently dipping down. So by a couple hundred kilometers to the south, these are a kilometer underground underneath younger rocks. And they often have oil and gas in them because they're quite, they're fractured and they're surrounded by shale. And they often have shale on the tops. So they're zones, discrete zones of um, more porous rock because all the fractures and so gases, um, waters that tend to accumulate in these subsurface reservoirs. So these rocks are really important for oil and gas. And there is a big, well there was a big oil and gas industry in Ontario. 1858, first discovery of oil. And uh, there's a bit of a debate between us and the US as usual. 1859, they, they found oil down in Pennsylvania and in much the same sort of rocks. So this is the start of the international oil industry here in Ontario. So where did people get oil before that? How did people light their homes? Animals. Yeah? What, what? Oils from animals. What sort of animals? Whales. Whales, yeah, whale oil, which is expensive, scarce. And then people found naturally occurring oil down at Petrolia, hence the name, and uh, the modern oil industry was born. Okay, so uh, don't forget that. We've got young glacial striations and old rocks. And um, the reason I brought you here is that it's full of fossils. Um, he's been right twice. Something must be happening. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, most of these are corals of various types, and we'll get into the different types later on. There's some shelled organisms we call brachiopods. Uh, there's some bivalves, occasional trilobites, and for the first time ever, fish. 
fossil fish because now we are in Devonian rocks. Now, can I just can I just borrow your? Um... How do you know it's for the first time ever? Well, I was here when it happened. <laughs> I said. <laughs> so you were released during the ice age? Oh yeah. Oh, the ice, the ice age was just yesterday. How do you think I know which way the ice went? That's true. <laughs> What's this here? Oh, some old fossil. <laughs> it's a coral. No, not everything can be a coral. Most of these are corals in different sections. Some are vertical, so you see a cross section. Mm -hmm. Think of them as cucumber-like things, and you're looking at a long yeah, cut. Nice right, right. Okay, anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. We've been driving, we've been driving south from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie. There's the Niagara Escarpment, okay, hard Silurian rocks. We've been going down the dip slope. And buried underneath all the glacial stuff is another little escarpment. That's the Onondaga escarpment. And these are now Devonian rocks coming in. And Devonian rocks are noted worldwide for the first appearance of fish. Uh, not the sort of fish you could have eaten because they had hard external skeletons. And that's why we find <coughs> pieces of them. So it would have been not very pleasant eating, so there's no fish and chips <laughs> in you the Devonian. Hmm? You wouldn't need batter, they already had <laughs> No, that's true. Okay, so Devonian rocks, slightly younger. That's yours with all the mess on it. Um, chocolate. So let's see what we see. Cucumbers, anybody? Yeah, it's like fossils and fossils and fossils. Yeah. Look at this one. You see the branching little pieces? Yeah, when you first look at it, you don't see a darn thing, but then you can see everything. It was used for uh, cement. It's very good uh, for making cement. It's crushed, dried, and then sent off. But uh, it's not very thick. So what's down there is a shale. That's at the bottom of the limestone. And that's why the quarry floor <coughs> is there, because there's no use mining down any deeper, because they don't want it. So that's the limit, the bottom limit of the limestone. We're going to go down there. There's some nice fossils in the shale, a completely different type of fossil because it was a different environment, right? Because the shale is a muddy, was a muddy sediment, so corals hate it. So no more corals. Um, but the thing I wanted to point out to you was this sort of innocuous looking ridge. Here, sort of curves. Everybody notice that ridge? Yes. Well that, ladies and gentlemen, is a pop-up where the rocks, remember we were talking about fractures, neotectonics? Well, the rocks are under pressure and all of a sudden they, they pop up and it happens quickly and it generates a low magnitude earthquake, magnitude one. Uh, it's the high horizontal stresses in the rock created by the movement of the North American plate. Some places you have tension, you get fractures. Other places you've got, what's the opposite? What's the opposite of tension? Compression. Yeah, so that's a good example of the result of compression in rocks, pop-ups. And they occur in mines, they're very dangerous if they occur underground. They're called bumps. Bumps. Yes, it does. Magnitude one. It'll be like an epicenter. Yes. Very violent. It's like the middle of the earth. It's like the same point.